In my Hyperbolic devlogs, I mentioned you can build a model of hyperbolic geometry using crochet, but I never learned how to do it myself. Until now. It's actually really easy, and I'll show you how to do it in this video. But there's an even more fundamental connection between crochet and topology, so let me show you why it's so cool from a programming and mathematics perspective. Normally, crochet adds to a piece one stitch at a time, as you kind of spiral around. But what you're really doing is building a mesh, just like you would in something like Blender. In fact, I built this crochet simulator to show how that works. To be clear, there's like a million different kinds of fancy crochet stitches, but ignoring aesthetics, there's really only three that you need. Let's unwrap a cross section so you can see what I mean. These square stitches are the simplest kind, called single crochet. So let's say your hook is over here, and you add a single crochet. The previous row is now connected to the new one, and once you spiral around to the next row, you can hook onto it again. This is how you'd make something like a cylinder. The next kind of stitch is called an increase. That's when you put your hook through the next stitch twice, which creates an extra stitch in the next row. In other words, if we had six stitches in this row, we'll be doing seven in the next row. It's as if we added a pentagon into the square grid. And maybe you can see where I'm going with this. Pentagonal grids don't work in Euclidean geometry, but it's perfectly valid in hyperbolic geometry. So to make hyperbolic crochet, you're just using the increase stitch over and over again to add extra pentagons to the grid, causing it to get exponentially larger each row and forcing the excess curvature into the third dimension. But before we get to the tutorial, there's still one more stitch to talk about. As you may have guessed, it's called a decrease. That's when you hook through the next two stitches, connecting them together and losing a stitch in the process. So the next row here would only have five stitches. Using only these three stitches, we can make all sorts of different manifolds. Like to make a sphere, you would start by increasing a lot in the beginning, then slowly transitioning to just single crochets near the equator, and then transitioning to more and more decreases until the hole disappears. If you want a mathematically perfect sphere, there are patterns online that worked out all the math for you. In fact, there's a ton of free crochet patterns online, and you can actually follow and apply it into the crochet simulator. Okay, but enough simulation. It's time to actually try this in real life. So let's make a hyperbolic plane. What you'll need is some yarn, the most common size is four, and a matching crochet hook, which would be around three and a half to four millimeters with that yarn. I recommend finding a hook that has a flat section for your thumb. It just makes it a little easier to control the rotation compared to just a pole. To get started, the first step is to make a slip knot. The easiest way is to make a loop on a table with the short end on top. Make a bump on the long end and pull it through the loop, and pull the ends of the string until you get a knot. The cool thing about a slip knot is that it's not really a knot. Pulling on the string will undo it. In fact, all crochet is based on slip knots, so if you make any mistakes later on, it's super easy and fun to undo by just pulling the string, sometimes called frogging, and the entire piece can be unraveled. So you really could unravel an entire sweater. Back to the slip knot, now we can insert the hook and pull the string until the loop is snug around the hook, but not too tight. It should be loose enough to easily slide on the hook, and try to keep it that way all the time. What we have now is the long end attached to the ball of yarn, the hook in a slip knot, and the short end or tail, which won't be used anymore, so you can cut that off if you want. Now the fun starts. We're going to turn the slip knot into a chain. Use the hook to grab yarn from the long end and pull it through. The easiest way is to twist the hook around the yarn as you pull it through so it doesn't slip off. You don't need that much tension, and if you have too much slack, you can just tighten it after you've already pulled it through. We're going to do this chaining twice, so one more time. Now it's time to do the first real stitch. Find a gap on the chain that you can push the hook through, then hook some yarn and pull it out of just the hole, so that you end up with two loops on the hook. All you have to do now is yarn over again and pull through both of the loops. 
Now you'll have one loop on the hook again. Repeat this five more times through the same gap so that you've gone through it a total of six times. At this point, we have the same hexagon shape as in the simulation, and this will be our base to build the rest of the hyperbolic surface. And believe it or not, you've already done the hardest part. From here, we're going to increase every single stitch so that each round doubles the perimeter, because that's a hyperbolic surface by definition. An increase is just two single crochets in the same hole. Start by finding the next stitch. You should look for a V shape and try to get the hook under the V like this. It takes some getting used to, but it gets easier each round. Like before, hook the yarn and pull it through so you have two loops on the hook, and yarn over one more time to get it back to one. That's a single crochet. An increase means we do another single crochet, but instead of going to the next V, we use the same hole again. You can trace down from the hook if you're having trouble finding it. So again, poke through, grab the yarn, and yarn over again to get back to one loop. That's it. You just increase over and over again every single stitch, and very quickly you'll get a hyperbolic surface. This one took me just 20 minutes. It's a lot of curvature though, so if you want something bigger, you'll need to increase every other stitch, or even every third stitch. So for example, the pattern for this one is two single crochets, then an increase, then two single crochets, increase, and so on. Also, don't be discouraged if you're finding it difficult, it just takes a bit of practice, especially with the finger positioning and tension. And don't worry if sometimes you miscount your stitching or you use the wrong holes in a few places. Hyperbolic surfaces are really forgiving, so it'll still turn out fine. Another thing to mention is I'm using a special kind of yarn called tube yarn or beginner yarn. The stitches show up a lot more clearly, especially on camera, and you never accidentally pull partial threads, so it's a great option if you can find it. As you get better, like Mrs. Parade, there's other cool topologies you can make too, like Mobius strips, minimal surfaces, Seifert surfaces, and more. I just find it so cool how much crochet is connected with mathematics, and I don't think it's talked about from that perspective enough. It's also just a fun cathartic activity that can't really be done any other way. Unlike knitting, there's actually no such thing as crochet machines because the dexterity needed is usually too complicated for machines to replicate. So if you ever see crochet things, they're always made by hand, either for fun or in a sweatshop. Just a bit of trivia. And if you'd like to learn more about mathematical fiber art, you can check out Diana Taimena's work. She literally wrote the book on hyperbolic crochet. And if you want to play with the simulator, it's open source and on itch.io, so you can check it out in the links below. Thanks for sticking through the tutorial, and I'll see you all next time. Shh.